Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. Well, not quite as beautiful as it was this past weekend. This past weekend, it was absolutely gorgeous. I actually tried to get out and shoot some video, and it just didn't go according to plan. So here I am today on this overcast day. Uh, still plenty of snow on the ground. We got some more snow over the weekend. This is just a winter that seems like it will not end. But I know warmer days are ahead, spring is around the corner, and so, well, we're gonna get there. On this episode of 3B TV, I finally have a plan, and I wanna share it with you. So on the last episode, I actually shared with you some of the ideas that we had um, with regards to our homestead uh, for 2019. And one of those was to build a mobile chicken coop. And I finally settled on a design. So what I want to do is I want to show you kind of what I've got here. And then I want to run inside where it's warmer. And we'll talk about it. So right here behind me. It doesn't look like much. It's buried in the snow. But we have a frame of a utility trailer. This is my dad's utility trailer um, that I, I, I can't remember if he bought it off of a guy or a friend gave it to him, doesn't matter. But it has seen better days. And so over the weekend I asked my dad, what are your plans for the utility trailer? He said, you know, I don't have any, don't plan on doing anything with it. And so I am going to be building a mobile chicken coop on that frame so excited about it so let's go inside let me show you the plans and hopefully you'll be as excited about it as i am let's go all right so here we are back indoors where it's nice and warm very excited to share with you kind of the ideas i've got percolating in my head for this mobile coupe design now in our last video i did share with you some of the ideas that i had some of the um, plans I was considering with regards to the mobile coupe design. Um, and one of those was the Chickshaw from Justin Rhodes. And one of my friends reached out to me, um, a buddy of mine by the name of Andy, who has been to my farm, he knows what my property is like, and he has experience with a Chickshaw design that he used to use on his farm. And he cautioned me against using that design here on this property. Not because it's a bad design, but because it's it's a design that, according to Andy, doesn't lend itself well to the type of terrain that I have. Justin Rhodes's farm, if you watch his channel at all, is for all intents and purposes, it's, it's relatively flat. He does have a few gradual inclines, but in, in the most of the areas where he runs his chickens, it is relatively level. That's not the case on my farm. My farm does have um, some slopes in, in some areas, not significant slopes, but slopes that Andy said he, in his experience, he felt like wouldn't lend itself well to the design of the um, chick shop. Uh, according to him, on his farm, which did have some um, significant uh, slope and also some rough terrain, um, the back of the chick saw was kind of heavy and lent, wanted to wheelie um, on him. And also he had problems with the wheels not holding up well on rough terrain. And so that was great advice from Andy. I really, really appreciated that. So after we kind of moved that idea out of the realm of possibilities, I was thinking also with regards to uh, Al Lumna's design where he took an old pop-up camper and built a coop on top of that. But then he was also working on a bacon mobile where he's building a pig house on top of a, uh, a kit that he bought from Northern Tool. And his suggestion was that the kit might be a better idea, a better way to go, because that kit is a little under $300, and by the time you were to buy a old pop-up camper and then tear it all apart and dispose of the parts and pieces that you're not going to use in the long run from a time perspective and potentially for the amount of money that you're going to put into it you'd be far better to buy the brand new kit from Northern Tool 
And I went, I looked it up, it was, I think about $288, I'm not sure what the shipping charges would be, and so I was kind of leaning in that direction until, I think it was on Saturday, I was walking by this utility trailer that I have sitting in my yard, and I kind of had an epiphany. Like the light bulb went on, ding! And I was like, what if I just use that? Is dad going to use that uh, utility trailer anymore? The utility trailer needs to be redecked. The, um, it's a dump style utility trailer and that latch is broken so that needs to be dealt with somehow and so I contacted dad and I said what are your plans for the utility trailer? He said I don't have any, I'm not going to do anything with it. Perfect, do you mind if I have it? Nope, you can have it. So with that in mind I knew the direction I was going to head and I went out and I tried to do some googling to find okay anybody that's built a chicken uh, a mobile chicken coop on an old utility trailer frame and I ran into either a there weren't too many plans out there that I could find or b the plans that I did find I just didn't really care for and so I sat down I sketched out this mobile chicken coop that I'm gonna build on this utility trailer frame and I wanna share that with you I'm not an artist I'm not an architect so these are really really rough I'm gonna warn you that these are really really rough but I'm hoping that you can kind of provide me with some feedback as well and say, okay, maybe you should think about this. Maybe that's not such a good idea. Um, and you can kind of help me build the best mobile chicken coop that mankind has ever seen. Or not. But at least help me avoid making some major, major design mistakes. And I would really be grateful. Once I sat down and sketched this out and kind of had an idea in my head as far as what I wanted to do, and, and folks, I promise you there's not going to really be anything earth shattering here, but I am excited about this. Um, but I went back and I did some more Googling and actually then at that point, I don't know if I used different keywords or the keywords I'd used before weren't the right keywords, but I came up with this design here that I'm going to link to right here from Northern Path Family Farm out of Michigan that they call Eggs on Wheels that is very similar to the design I had in my head and then I kind of made a few tweaks to my design based on their design um, and I'm excited I think this is gonna really work out well now, there's a few major differences between the design that they have and my design and uh, maybe you might look and watch their video and watch mine and look at my design and say I think you need to go their direction or maybe whatever let me know. Give me some feedback, okay? So let's dive right into this. I'm very excited to share this with you, and hopefully, um, hopefully you'll find this helpful. So, again, this is not anything earth-shattering, but kind of what I'm planning on doing here. This is my utility trailer base here, okay? So this is looking at it from the back end of the trailer, looking onto... Um, the what would be the the let's say the back not really the back side the the one side of the coop okay so um, I'm planning on building that eight foot eight foot tall on this side six foot tall on this side putting a door in here um, and uh, then right here I'm going to do a pop door I want to do an automatic pop door. Uh, solar automatic pop door so that uh, this will really be very predator proof um, at night. Um, got the little ramp there, some steps. Um, the other thing is, is on this trailer, this trailer is um, a little bit heavy on the back end. I think it's because of the dump trailer model that if I were to stand on the very back of that trailer, it's going to do a wheelie. So what I want to do is I want to, and I actually kind of drew it out down here, but underneath the back part of the frame is to put um, some of those legs that kind of telescope out that you would find on a, on a travel trailer. And I, I want to see if I can get some that are long enough to be able to just act as stabilizers that I can kind of put down there in the back and, be, and, and really provide some stability to this. I am thinking that once I put some weight on the front, I'm going to put a rain barrel on the front that probably will keep that tippy nature of it um, under control, but just to be on the safe side, I am planning on putting those stabilizers here in the back. Now, when I had originally designed this or drawn this out, I was only planning on putting nesting boxes on this side. 
And then I saw their design. They had nesting boxes on both, the, both sides. And I thought, great idea. Why didn't I think of that? And so I'm planning on putting nesting boxes on both sides that can be accessed from the outside of the coop. Again, nothing earth shattering here, but that's just my plan there. The other thing I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on using um, corrugated tin at the um, for the for the roofing material with uh, some gutters um, on the low side here, and uh, we'll talk about that some more here in a little bit. So this uh, is the picture here of the side view. Um, this would be the low side of of the of the uh, the mobile chicken trailer here, I'm not sure we're going to call it the egg mobile or whatever. Um, so plan on putting a rain barrel here, so that we'll have the guttering coming into the rain barrel, and then we'll actually connect this out to a bell style water and maybe even to a black rubber pan um, that I can hook up for the pigs to drink out of. Um, one of the other things on this trailer that um, my, my dad is giving me, in essence, it does not have a trailer jack in the front. So I'm going to have to get a trailer jack so that I can level it in the front. Um, I'm not going to, I don't believe once I've got all of this built on there that I'll have the, the strength, um, I guess I'm just a wimp, and especially when you got all that water in there, to be able to lift it on and off of a ball. Um, on my tractor, so I'll be putting on the front of it a trailer jack. Um, so again, you can see the, uh, the nesting boxes off the side and the uh, water um, on the front. This is the other side view of it. Again, we've put nesting boxes here. I'm planning on doing some windows. I'm not exactly sure what shape or size yet, but I've kind of got them drawn in there. Up here on the top, we'll have some rafters going on and I'm going to leave this area here open uh, I'm gonna put some hardware cloth across that lip um, but so that the, we have some good ventilation uh, coming up through the top there and uh, that way it won't be very hot inside the um, the, the mobile chicken tractor um, again you can see over here the pop door um, and uh, their access uh, as well as some steps that I'm going to plan on uh, connecting to the back of it and then the door uh, for entrance into the mobile chicken coop. Finally, the last thing is this is really the roughest, probably the roughest part of the sketch to understand. But what I'm planning on doing is putting in roosts that are kind of at an angle like this, stepped down um, with two by fours as roosts all the way up that actually will pivot. So I'm planning on hooking them um, to the wall. I'm not sure with bolts or whatnot, but then I can raise them up and latch them out of the way so that I can clean out the bottom uh, and then put it back down. Um, that's one of the big differences between my design and the uh, Northern Path family farm design. They did hardware cloth in the bottom of the um, their mobile coop with the idea of allowing the manure and everything to to fall down through and fertilize. I'm not going to do that for a number of reasons. First of all, what I found is that generally doesn't work. Um, the hardware cloth just it's the, the the holes are too small, and so you just end up with a, a, a buildup of manure and and such anyhow on the bottom. But that's also I found that to be very hard on the chicken's feet, and I. To me, that leads more to a bumblefoot problem when you have that rough um, hardware cloth. At least that's been our experience here. I put some hardware cloth on the front of what we call the quack shack and brooded some chicks in there. And the year that I did that, they had the worst case of bumble, bumble feet. Um, and I attribute it to that hardware cloth. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a, a fixed um, floor, probably going to put down some linoleum some cheap whatever vinyl that I can find, hopefully some remnants. That'll make it very easy for me to just clean it out, put wood chips in there, basically use a deep litter method underneath there, um, and then periodically be able to just shovel it right out the door and, uh, and get rid of it. Um, so that's what that uh, design is here. Um, right here is just that, uh, those roosting uh, bars 
that uh, will hopefully be able to swing up out of the way. What I want to make sure is that the lowest bar is higher than the nest boxes so that they will be more apt to roost on the roosts and not sleep in the nesting boxes and get the nesting boxes full of poop and dirty eggs. That's what I don't want. So, so folks, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of 3BTV. I'm so excited to build this uh, chicken coop. Not going to be able to get to it for several weeks because I have got a major, major bathroom remodel coming up here in the house. And so I'm not even sure how many videos I'm going to put out over the next couple of weeks. I really tried to commit this year to doing at least one homesteading video a week on our channel. Uh, but next week may be tough because I'm going to be launching into a bathroom remodel this coming Saturday. And only God knows how long that's going to take me to finish up. I'm nervous. I'm scared about that. But hey, I'm crazy enough to give it a try. So anyhow, thanks so much for tuning in, folks. If you found this helpful uh, or you've enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe. I'm sure I'll be doing follow-up videos once I finalize the plan. And then once I start building it, I'll bring you along on the journey. Until next time, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. And spring, please come quickly. Catch you later.